Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of being able to describe what we've been doing in Sheffield, because in the local authority sector, it is a very, very different model. Now, it's been really reassuring listening to the other speakers this morning, and the, the key points that we've been making, and I've been going tick, 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 which is a good position to be. Um, the other thing is, having looked at the attendance in this, of course, there's a lot of suppliers here, and potential suppliers. I'm going to talk a lot about the savings, because in the current economic climate, that's really key on our agenda. But hopefully, I'll be able to show that uh, having a very strong, integrated, got its act together commercial organisation is actually a friend, not a foe. So, in terms of the objectives, what I'd like to do is just briefly talk about some of the challenges that exist within uh, the local authority sector, because I think that helps to set the scene with then what the approval we have to make is. I'd like to briefly talk about our strategy to create a very different commercial model and to describe the benefits that would deliver both financial and other benefits. But there's also a challenge here to my colleagues in the public sector, particularly in the local authority sector. The transformation I'm going to describe is very, very different. We've done it, we've done it in a short time, we've done it without external help, often it goes consultants, it can do it itself. We've delivered considerable benefits which are growing year on year, and it's time for others to do the same thing. Now we're all happy to help people on that journey. In fact, I'm spending a lot of my time now advising other local authorities on how they can go along the same journey. So just in terms of some of the issues we're addressing, um, there's some quite strong messages here, and they're not just personal opinion. We've done an analysis of a large number of local authorities and talking to my colleagues in our various networks. So local authorities spend about 50 billion a year with third parties, a huge, huge figure, which ought to put us right there on the top table. Some of the issues I'm going to raise is often not on the top table. We talk about improving procurement and how we can make procurement professionals use leaner processes, all the good things we've heard this morning. But I'm afraid it's missing a very, very big issue. Across local authorities in general, and with the exceptions, normally only 25 to 30 percent of the spend is actually managed by procurement professionals and procurement teams. The majority is dealt with by people in the service areas who are very enthusiastic, very knowledgeable in their area, but whether they've had any procurement training or not is, is a, a very different matter. That has a number of implications. The first is, if procurement is so important, 50 million, a billion, sorry, important, why is it it's not been treated as a proper procurement profession? We certainly wouldn't let finance departments or legal departments be run by people that are not professionally qualified at the top of the game, but it seems to be acceptable in the procurement area. From the supplier perspective, it must make things difficult. All that uh, diverse people you're dealing with, the diverse knowledge and experience, knowledge of complex processes, etc. It also impacts benefits. Our experience is that when we've taken over the procurement that's been done historically in service departments, we've increased the benefits, financial benefits, fivefold as well as other benefits in terms of risk management, service improvement. So there's some really big issues there. Moving on from that, even where there are procurement teams, on average, only about 30% of the staff are actually qualified or are close to being qualified. And by qualified, I'm talking about six qualified. The level of performance management, investment, and even interest in procurement is, in my view, unacceptable. It is becoming a top ten fighter, and certainly the clear messages from central government are very helpful. But often it really isn't. Procurement is well down the pecking order in the management interest of the local authorities, and that's, that's really got to change. Now, even areas like processes to capture and report savings, 
can't generally pull. I know many learning authorities that have no idea what level of commercial return they are bringing to their local authorities. And my final one to throw in is I believe up to 50% of the savings potential is not really <coughs> recognised. Now I'm going to let you hang in there for a while. I'll tell you what the 50% is later. So we need your attempt to make stuff. But my, uh, my view is, and hopefully I'll show you, it can be very, very different from what I've just described. So what's happened in Sheffield? Well, the key was in 2008, as a result of a consultant review of, uh, of uh, what was happening in Kimberley, a decision was made to implement a totally new commercial model. And it was based on, first of all, appointing a commercial director, me, uh, and I was responsible and responsible for all, and I stress the word, all third party spend of Sheffield Council. Now, as of today, that's around 750 million a year. And that is 60% uh, of the total revenue of the council goes through my hands and through my commercial team. Um, it's a large percentage, that, that third party, <coughs> probably a lot larger than many councils because we've outsourced all of our operational activities. We call ourselves a thinking council or a doing council. Nearly everything has been outsourced. So major long-term service partnership contracts are what they're about. And that might give you a hint about a very good shortly. Um, my agreement when I started is to establish a best practice commercial services organization. And the remit started with procurement, contract and supply management, and any commercial deal that the council is thinking of. Over the intervening period, we then extended our scope request of our executive management committee to commission it. And it, I really uh, latched on to the comment that was made before, I think it was by Sally, that said commissioning is the front part of what they're going to procure. The two are very, very integrated. And that's absolutely where they came from. We found that where the commissioners, where the procurement was going wrong, it was because it was poor commissioning that was taking place. And one of the things that we have done is created a complete commissioning A to Z toolkit on how to do it. So I probably want to talk to Sally and the Commissioning Academy about that. We then extended to commercial training. Uh, so the points that were made by the last video about improving commercial acumen and skills. We train suppliers. I'll talk more about that. We train other local authorities on commercial activities. We train our own people things like commissioning, contract management, etc. And the final extension is leveraging our £750 million spend to help it develop the local economy. I'll talk a bit more about that. So in terms of how we've done that, how we've done, we've got four key strategies. The first one was centralising all procurement. And that is quite a difficult thing to do. I might be wrong, but I'm not aware of any local authority that has centralised all of its procurement. We started with a 70% of the spend, and after four years, it was quite a difficult transition. We run 100% of the procurement across the council. Why was it difficult? Well, we were dealing with vested interests, we were dealing with an inertia to change, and we really had to prove ourselves. So, hence my insistence on performance management and clear and delivery of savings. But I have to say, the current climate, with all the financial cutbacks, our day has come because with us managing 60% of all the money of the city, we're in a position to make things happen. When we took over procurement, we didn't just implement what I would call other style procurement, we implemented best practice category management. And the key is, it's managing the spend and the key relationships with our suppliers from cradle to grave, not the old days of creating a contract and walking away from it and it's received to be renewal. So from the supplier perspective, our suppliers really like that. They know who to deal with. That person is there for the generation. They're an expert in the marketplace and they really work well together. We work together on things like developing the supply market. Council. And one of our more 
difficult challenges which my executive management team keep reminding me of. One of our roles is to challenge the demand for the spend in the first place. Not just say, oh, you want this, how can we best get it for you? But really, why do you want it? Uh, and even challenging the requirements you know, by having the gold plate and specifications. Quite a, a difficult balancing act that, because it doesn't make it very popular when you're really that challenging. We invested heavily in our people. Unlike, I think, just about every department in Sheffield City Council, we are increasing in size, we're increasing the number of staff, and we're doing it on a simple return on investment. And my, my very last Sheffield slide will show you what that return on investment is. We're recruiting some new blood. It's not all about bringing in people from the private sector or wherever, it's about having the right mixture. So our team is a mixture of people who were born and bred in Sheffield Local Authority from other public sectors and from the private sector. So a really good mix of people. We run our own in-house SIPS course with a, with a partner. And uh, today we've got 41% of our staff are uh, partners so are fully qualified or just about to become fully qualified. If you, if you took in the number that are in the pipeline currently being trained, it's probably near to about 60%. And a few speakers have talked about spend and data. I'm in a wonderful position. I know exactly what we're spending on 750 million on. Exactly. I know types of spend. We use the Thompson's coding system, which is 850 different categories of spend. I know all about our suppliers, because we categorize all our suppliers. Uh, and so, for instance, we talked about SMEs before. I know exactly how much we spend with SMEs, charities, social enterprises. Uh, and to date, nobody's been able to throw a question to me that we haven't been able to answer immediately. That is a wonderful place to be. It took a lot of hard work to get there. It's absolutely essential. We start moving on to uh, what to me is the absolute huge missed opportunity, contract management. Already been mentioned a few times this morning. What's the problem? Well, a few views about it. Contract management is just not understood as generally poor across the public sector. The NAO and their reports have said that in many reports. But I have to say, when I come from the private sector as well as the public sector, and often that the private sector is not great either, so I think both of our sides are pressing to learn. There's a lot of myths and naive views, I put some of them down there. Self-managing contracts, fluffy company partnerships, don't upset the relationship. I mean the word partnerships makes me cringe, so it's so abused, but we've got a very clear definition of what partnership is. It's strong performance management, but the right, right behaviours and working together with our suppliers so that we jointly solve problems and jointly build the future that is underpinned by strong performance management. The result is a lack of investment in contract management in the people, the systems, and the processes. Uh, often it's non existent, and that was my experience when I joined in Sheffield. One of the areas that people assume that it's probably okay is the service side, the client side. But I have to even query that because when we really looked at what the service client arrangements are, they're often quite wacky. I know of the local authority only last year outsourced a whole raft of its key services and it outsourced every single person. There was no client. Nobody with any knowledge of those service areas, there was no contract management. I had a little chat with the executive team and their jaws dropped and they had to then be planning to actually recruit people to put back in place what they just outsourced. So you know, it's a common rule in outsourcing, you don't outsource you core strategic driver, it ends people doing it today. This has to change. But I've already said that Sheffield has outsourced their operational activities and I hear more and more local authorities that are outsourcing more of their activities and the more we do that, the more we're working together with external partners, the more your contract management and supplier relationships has to be right. The other side is the benchmarking, all sorts of benchmarking, 
suggests that there's an opportunity to make an additional 5 to 7% financial saving by working together and managing the relationship through the life. That's on top of what the procurement deal was in the first place. So, what was our strategy? The first thing is, we've created a totally new approach to contract management, which is now recognised as practice. Who's it recognised as practice by? Well, OGC, when they were about, confirmed it. SIPs have confirmed that it's the best approach in the private and public sector. And we're currently working with the Audit Commission, who are doing a research report due out in the later in the autumn, which will talk all about this approach. And it has two real component parts, the intelligent client strategic framework. What is it that the council together, the client side and the contract management side, how do they work together to work properly with their supplier community? And that covers roles and responsibilities, the governance approach, <coughs> behaviours and values. So that underpins our approach. We then have an absolutely unique contract management toolkit I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but it is, it is the jewel in the crown, basically. Having got those foundations in place, all major strategic contracts in Sheffield, and that, that is about 200 million per annum, are managed by top contract management professionals within my department with commercial services. All other contracts, and there's many hundreds of them, which are the smaller, low value ones, they are still managed in the service areas within the council. But the key is, we accredit the people doing it to become accredited contract managers. To do that, they have to go through a training course, so we know they've got the skills, the competency, the support, and they have to use the contract management toolkit. One of our sticks, if you ever need it, is we can withdraw that accreditation that people go off in sheets and start doing their own thing, but it means we have a standard best practice approach. What's that done? When Sheffield, having implemented that, we actually delivered 80% of our additional savings on top of the initial procurement. So this is not double counting, this is on top of the initial procurement. The service delivery has improved. Risks have been managed, and that's part of the reason the service delivery is improved, because we work together to identify issues, identify problems, make sure they're fixed. We work together on continuous improvement, because service delivery always changes as customer expectations change. We've had to make some fairly minor changes to contracts. So last year, with the economic cuts, we had to say to our key suppliers, together we need to reduce the spend by about 15%. Now what we didn't want is people getting the contract down to the bottom drawer and start saying, oh, it says this in the contract. We worked together, we delivered in May that 15% saving, and we did it to the benefit of both parties without any new issues. And as a result of that close working relationship, our supplier relationships are better than ever. We are challenging, we are demanding, we we'll hold people accountable, but we work together and we're very fair and we do it in a standard way so people know what's on the tin, they know how to work together. And our whole approach to contract management is actually embedded within our contracts. It's a schedule in our contracts, even our values. We say these are, these are the values we expect to work together. So I'm not sure how many contracts have in their terms and conditions, values and behaviours, but I think that's where you need to go. And the bottom line is, I did a calculation. If you took that 8% and you looked at the 50 billion a year spent by local authorities, and if you make an assumption and maybe only about 25% of that spend is from big contracts that would be willing to put the full benefit of this in, that is 1 billion a year of extra savings that are not being gathered today. That's, that's the opportunity, that's the challenge. Sorry, I'm all about savings, but I have to say that suppliers in the room, it's a far better working relationship with clarity and working together as well. But we cannot afford to let one billion a year just go by the side. As 
a result of that uh, little calculation, things have happened. We have now been asked to develop a national contract management service for all local authorities across the country. We're being sponsored by the local government association to roll out this best practice contract management approach across the country. So the key around it is the toolkit. The toolkit covers some 27 areas of activity. It covers supplier relationship management, contract performance management, contract process management, and it absolutely is an A to Z of how to do it. And how to do it is the best practice we found from anywhere out in the world. So we've sucked all that in and put it into one box. So it means that whoever the contract manager is, whether they're a procurement professional, whether they're a service <coughs> officer manager in a service area, they've got the tools to actually make them effective from day one. Of course, you build the experience on top of that, but it means you're starting from a very high position. And as part of this national service, we're, uh, we're running regional awareness events just to explain to people the importance of contract management. I thought this was going to have to be a really hard sell. Actually, I've been amazed. As soon as I've explained what has been missed and the opportunities, it's been like a light bulb moment. And instead of a big sell, it's been, yes, please, we want it now, which is great. It means the time has come to address some of the, certainly the, the issues that people were raising earlier. So in terms of helping people move forward, we're running one-day training courses for groups of people on a regular basis. We're providing unlimited numbers of these toolkits for a single small annual license and support fee to each local authority. We're providing help desk support on the use of the toolkit, and we're running annual user events to keep on sucking up the best practice and keep developing the toolkits and getting better and better because best practice and understand still. This is already in the process of being implemented in 13 local authorities and we only started three months ago. I'm sorry that it was wrong because people sign up every day. It was 13 last Friday, this morning it was 16. So that's the speed at which things are happening. And there's parts of the country where the whole region has signed on to this and moving forward. One of my side challenges now is I've set a time away from how many demand, but that's a nice challenge. So, people have got the message, the light bulb moment has got off, and we've got the tools to make people be effective in this whole area of contract management and supply relationship management. So the one billion extra saving is there to be grabbed. Uh, quickly moving on, um, our other two parts of our strategy is best practice. We firmly believe, don't we, that we or somebody out there has probably done it really well, let's find it, let's implement it, and let's get on, and if, if we have to, it will just be bits we have to. So we're systematically been trawling public, private sector, suppliers, as we have for their good ideas, to build what we call a commercial one best way approach. We have various forums we have in place internally to keep on developing that. One of the key areas, which I wanted to mention, I mentioned it right at the beginning, we have a very comprehensive performance management framework about how well we are performing. And it's a really balanced scorecard approach. So in that it has things like what proportion of our spend is with the local business, how much is with SMEs, etc. That approach is now being rolled out to all 22 local authorities across the whole Yorkshire and the region. So that's a great step forward. We've got a whole region of the country, all will in the next two months have a very, very strong uh, performance management framework, which the chief executives of the region can then hold their procurement teams accountable to. Um, category management, which I mentioned before, one of the key things about category management is it's about managing spend. So we've had to put very, very strong spend controls in place. And again, time, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I think the key things are very tight control, only one way to pay suppliers. We, the commercial services, decide which suppliers go in and off. And the benefit of that is it helps us control maverick spend and it makes sure that those suppliers who are our partners get the business that they competed for in the first place and people are bypassing them. I think the other one there is 
Procurement is only done by procurement professionals. There's no more DIY people out there in the organisation. It's all done by top class professionals. Well, what are the results? In this uh, diagram here, if you look back to 2007 and 2008, our baseline, the council got PA Consulting in to run some proof of concept projects. Those projects delivered 2.8 million pounds worth of savings. Prior to that, the council was not recording or publishing any savings from the procurement or commercial activities. The blue box is from, for the next box, that's when we started taking over procurement. So you can see as we put professionalism into procurement, the blue box has grown and grown and grown. The one that I think is of particular interest is the pink boxes, which is contract management. So we went from a position of no contract management to a position uh, last year where nearly half of the savings were from contract management. So over that journey, over three and a half years, we delivered a total saving of £65 million. Pounds. Of that, contract management is £25 million. If you just, it's not half there, because contract management is falling up behind. But now it's getting to the level where it's almost the same as the upfront procurement. If we look at that this year, currently, we're forecasting £31 million savings, and our forecasts have shown that level of saving increasing year on year for the next five years. Uh, interestingly enough, our spend is actually reducing. In the last year, it's gone down by 9%, but we're still increasing the proportion of spend uh, of savings on it. So, a real tangible delivery. There are other benefits. Because of the things that have been said this morning, I'm only going to talk about the first two bullets there. Talk about SMEs, the benefits of local business. One of the things we've done is we've run for the last three and a half years what we call the Buy Local Initiative. And the result of that is the proportion of Sheffield's spend that went to local business in 2008 was 46%. And that's actually not bad when I talk to profits. For the last two years, it's been 17%. So 70% of our 700 million a year goes to local Sheffield business. And it goes to them in a fully competitive process. We don't give them any special uh, favours. Come on to how we've done it. Over the last three years, we've put extra £500 million pounds into the local Sheffield economy. How we've done it, we created a forum three and a half years ago. We got the buyers from all eight public sector organisations in Sheffield together, the first time that you've spoken together, we got representatives from all the supplier sectors, from the third sector, we got a representative from the Federation of Small Business, the Chamber of Commerce, all, all those related associations. And basically we said, what's wrong? And of course we have a lot of uh, flip charts of what's wrong, and we worked together to fix it. And the things that we've done, improving information, the pipeline of procurement that's coming along, giving people advance warning. We've simplified our processes across all eight public sector organisations. We've built up joint understanding. One thing we didn't want them to show them, we've been running training programmes. We've had 600 plus organisations, both private and public, that run up, gone onto our training programmes. And we've trained them on how to answer a PQQ, how to put a winning bid in place. We offer a mentoring service where when people fail on the bid, we'll go through it and, and advise them on what they need to do next time. So what we've done is we've given the local suppliers and any others, anybody can come along to these forums, we don't, we don't uh, keep shut the door anymore. We've given them the tools, the information, the knowledge to enable them to become successful. At the end of the day, they have to step up and be successful. But what we've done is given them all the tools to be successful. And that's what gets on from 46% to 70%. And Mike was talking about SMEs. Well, I can tell you that half of that figure is SMEs. Now, we can improve on that, but our spending of SMEs, it varies over time, but it fluctuates between about 30 and 35%. My last slide, because I'm out of time, is I did mention that we run our commercial procurement activity as uh, 
uh, as a return on investment. On this slide, if you go over to the baseline 2007 8, um, when PA Consulting did their pilot project, what we've done here is we've divided the cost of procurement, the number of people, into the savings generated. So this is the savings generated per individual <coughs> commercial services procurement. So at the baseline, each person generated £64,000. In other words, they barely covered their costs. Not the pain of the £64,000, but when you add in all the overheads and the corner overheads, they barely put their head above water. As we've implemented our new approach, the figure now is over half a million a year. So each and every one of my commercial team delivers over half a million a year savings. And that will keep going up. So when people say to me, why did your function grow? It's a simple answer. Every person invested delivers in excess of half a million a year. That's my story. Um, I guess the challenge is, let others do it as well. We'll share how we've done it, we'll share our experiences, and let everybody get on this journey. Thank you, if you've any questions on it. Any questions for Barry on the checklist? Easy ones. Yeah, you'd like the easy ones. Work together. 
know that people know, know it's coming. It hasn't been a massive surprise, but so our, our aim is to make things work, not to get deductions.
those areas is where there is a lot more benefit to be obtained. And I don't mean just financial benefit, uh, about market development, because there's a lot happening in self-directed care, all those sorts of activities. And there's really a lot of market shaping that needs to be done. So it's not all about uh, savings, although I think there's a lot to be gained because there's some not great practices, but it's about helping develop the marketplace, the supplier community, not getting into the position where all our eggs are with one particular supplier who then goes bankrupt and we have a major problem. Because that's a good commercial team that we'll be doing. It'll be having, making sure you've got a mixed economy, that you've got contingency plans in place, that you're monitoring the health of your suppliers so that if somebody is starting to get into financial difficulty, it's not a horrible surprise you read in the paper. You know about it as quick as they know about it. And it's that working relationship. So we have taken on, in our in Sheffield, childcare and adult care, two separate divisions. We have taken them on. We are doing the procurement for them. Uh, the other interesting area is commissioning. Because those areas did put themselves up as the stars in commissioning. Where did the majority of the supply challenges come from? Those areas, because the commissioning was poor. You've got people with single-minded ideas, not considering the art of the possible, doing things that were not competitive, etc., etc. Um, again, that's an area where, because they've had these horrible challenges, which are quite emotive, time-consuming, it's actually turned the tables, and they've realised we know what we're talking about, Kishi, in terms of how to do it properly. Not the subject matter, the content. <laughs> And the door has blown wide open now. So we're really getting the uh, care from to use that phrase on commissioning and out of commission will come in better procurement. But is it legitimate?
which will strip that whole loans of your payment bureaucracy, time to pay, all those things. We offer very rapid payment terms if that helps the supplier in terms of their cash flow and they share some of that benefit with us. So it, it's really the art of the possible of finding out that we do it together uh, and nothing's off the table. Um, another area is man-to-man -man monthly on big contracts. Quite often you find there's a whole load of quality assurance type people on the council side being replicated by a similar lot on the supplier side. We're not proud of that, but should we strip those people out? Um, I think you mentioned risk. Um, one of the speakers quite rightly said we don't just show all the risk onto the suppliers. All of our contracts have proper uh, risk management systems in them. Again, done jointly with the supplier, um, and it's about where the risk lies. And, and we share the risk. There are things that we as a council cannot walk away from and shouldn't walk away from. And I think the key thing is having a robust and that instance risk management process that is joined with its suppliers and you being open and honest. And the key thing is you can do mitigations to deal with the risk. Because quite often people think of the piles of risk but not the actions that are going to mitigate the risk. But it's about doing it together so we're both on the same page, using literally the same information, you know, one view of the truth and those type of phrases. So we're not arguing about whose savings figures are right and who's risk figures are right. I'm sorry, I hope that's covered what you were saying. It's quite a complex area.